So it's a Monday night. I'm heading into the city with my daughter, who doesn't want to be on camera. We're going to see a concert. So I thought this would be a great chance to take the Canon N50 and see how it does in low light concert photography. Now, um, the venue doesn't let me bring any kind of microphone. I can no stand, no kind of tripod. So everything is going to be handheld tonight. Um, and we'll see how the camera does. Now, it's not my favorite in low light. So we're going to see what this camera can do. I'm hoping the stage is lit well. I have one lens with me. I have the 22 millimeter F2 because I couldn't bring a big lens with me. So this is gonna be a challenge, uh, but we'll see how it goes. We have a fun week for you because at the end of the week, Eric also has a, um, a fun video where he shoots my band in a local venue and he has a lot more access to us. So you're gonna see some concert photography with the Canon R. So uh, a lot of rock and roll this week. We'll see you when I get in the city. Well, we made it into the city, and now we're waiting for our Uber. And then we head down to Webster Hall. So this is the next part of the adventure. Okay, so I just spent three hours inside of Webster Hall with, I don't know, 4,000 18-year-olds, right? And uh, it was a long night. But, um, it's 9.30. It's, right, well, it's not that, it was good. We had a good time. But, um, so I was using the camera and trying to shoot over a crowd of people with just the 22 millimeter lens, which is really 35 millimeter equivalent. And it was not the best. I was messing around with my ISO and, um, you know, I had an auto, I was moving the settings around, different focus points, shutter speeds. So when I get home, I will actually go through all the pictures and see how this is. But I can see right now that the ISO is not great for this. And uh, this type of venue definitely needed a longer lens. I couldn't get anywhere near the stage. It was packed full of kids and I just couldn't get close. So I had to shoot from far back. So we'll head home now and I'll see what happens with these uh, images. tired this morning I'm not used to that kind of action at a concert you know uh, definitely getting older but I had a lot of fun and uh, going into the city is always a great time um, especially when you can go with your kids and you know they're seeing a lot of this stuff for the first time so it's great and um, this was a, a small venue the lighting was a little tough but I was surprised I just edited all the images and um, they're not horrendous for what I thought I was going to get the M50, when I've used it in low light situations, has given me some trouble with ISO. And what I'm coming to learn with this camera, and even with my Nikon, is that the ISO performance is better than you think it is. And if you trust the camera and shoot an auto ISO, and I know Eric did a video about that a few weeks ago, it would really, I got better results over the course of the night. I started out in ISO 640, roughly. Between 640 and 800, I was moving back and forth. And these first few, sh uh, few shots, I was shooting in AV mode. So I was letting the camera decide my shutter speed. I was at F2 wide open, and I was just shooting. And what I was noticing is that the shutter speed, there was some bright light, but so much of the scene was dark that even though the camera was metering off of the artist, I still couldn't get uh, a shutter speed fast enough, so I ended up having to crank the ISO up. 
And when I got to 800, that seemed to be the sweet spot where I could get a shutter speed of about a 100, 1 100th of a second. But a lot of times the performers were moving fast and I wasn't able to capture the movement sharp. So I shot like that for a little while and I got some of these images and they, they came out okay. And now I was standing probably, I don't know, 75 feet from the stage and uh, I had to crop in on a lot of these images. So, you know, this isn't the best situation. Ideally in a dark situation like this, you want to be at ISO 100 and you want to get as close to your subject as you can, either with your zoom or physically. And I didn't have either. I had no zoom with me and I couldn't physically get any closer. We were packed in there like sardines and I just couldn't, you know, get any closer to the stage. So I had to deal with what I had, where I was. After shooting like this for a little while, I changed my ISO and I started moving it around a little bit. I decided to bring it down a little bit and see what would happen if I could, yeah, I put it in manual mode, brought my ISO down and left my shutter speed at like one, one twenty-fifth of a second. And I took some images like that. And I was able to get a few that were sharp, decent shots. Um, a lot of them weren't because that shutter speed I was learning as the night was going on just wasn't great. So I kept, you know, shooting. So later on in the night, I switched to auto ISO. I was shooting in manual, I was at F2, and I went to two, one two hundredth of a second. Now, I was afraid that the auto ISO was gonna be kicking it up way high and I was gonna get a lot of bad images, but I started to notice that the ISO wasn't too bad. Every now and then it would creep up around 1,000, but some of the shots were actually low at like 200 or 320. So these images were the best ones of the night because they were all sharp, because my shutter speed was fast enough. So this is where I say, when you trust auto ISO, and there's a lot of light going on on the stage there, the camera was getting enough light that it decided to drop the ISO down on its own, and then I was definitely getting the sharp shot that I needed. If you're shooting any kind of movement, you wanna make sure your shutter speed is gonna be fast enough so that you can freeze it. You know, unless you want to, you know, get a little movement in things. Now, Eric, at the end of this week, um, two weeks ago, my band played a, um, a venue here on Long Island that's a pretty decent venue, and he had access to us, you know, behind the stage, on the stage, he can get real close. Uh, and he likes to play around with the shutter speed so you can show movement in the musicians when they play, you know, cymbals wobbling and, you know, somebody strumming a guitar and their hands blurred. So his video is coming out Sunday, and I'm curious to see that because uh, I saw him out there shooting the whole time, so I'm, I'm really interested to see how that goes. Now that is going to be more of a professional situation. He's using his Canon R with all his good lenses, and he was able to get close to us. He was able to zoom in when he needed to. So uh, those pictures should be very interesting and a totally different version of concert photography than what I did last night. If you're looking to have a small camera to bring with you to a venue, um, security let me go in with it because it looks small. I had the pancake lens on it, so there was really no issues with that. I was able to get some decent pictures with this where a cell phone just isn't going to be able to take images like this. And I don't know if you see in some of these images, but these kids had, there was a thousand cell phones up in the air and uh, you know, they take a million videos and I don't know what they're doing with all these videos, first of all, but anyway, they, they, it's, you know, that's all there is all night and I know the images are not gonna be fantastic. So at least these are usable images I can give to my daughter, you know, she'll have a memory of this night. Um, but the takeaway from this is auto ISO works. You wanna use a fast lens, so this was aperture F2. You wanna get something, if you tried this night with the kit lens, it would have been a very tough night to shoot. I would have had more zoom range, but because that lens, when you zoom it in, is at like 6.3, it's not going to be a great lens for, you know, get gathering light, really. So the, the widest aperture that you can get for your lens on a night like this would be perfect. And the ISO performance was actually better than I thought it was going to be. You can't push it like you can with a full frame camera, like what I'm used to with my Nikon D750, like Eric can with his Canon R. If you have a Sony full frame or whatever kind of full frame camera you have, or if you've ever used a full frame camera, but if you're new to photography and you're looking for, um, you know, your first camera that's going to give you really decent performance, uh, the M50 did really well. And, you know, this is like the fifth video I've done in this M50 for photography series. And uh, this is a, another way that you can use it. The other thing is this camera was really pocketable. 
I just had it in my jacket pocket. There was no nonsense. I wasn't allowed to use a uh, microphone. I couldn't bring any kind of support with me, no nothing. So I handheld everything. And um, I actually, any all the video clips you see, I shot with the camera also. I, I didn't have anything else with me, so I just took some video. And it's not spectacular, but it's okay. It has the uh, digital stabilization in it, so it was okay. I'm gonna link up a couple of videos here. This is our playlist for the Canon M50. If you wanna really, you know, see all the different things that we've done with it over the last year. And then this video here is the Canon M50 in low light. So you can get an idea of what I'm saying when it's not the best in low light. Okay, hope you enjoyed that. See you in the next one.